Hello, um, this is Akira Tsukamoto. I am going to talk about the uh, TIP protocol uh, to provide a software supply chain, not only for software supply chain, but um, one of the use cases is software supply chain. And this consists with the, some of the few working group in IETF. So that's, I'm going to start from many background. But main reason I'm talking today, and now I was um, today is the I was able or we were able to upload the uh, uh, implementation on the GitHub, and uh, in the right side, this is the uh, documentation, and which is uh, yeah uh, generated from Docuxygen, and the left side is uh, um, implementation so there's an implement the documentation it, ha it, it has all the procedure for the how to get the sources and how to build and how to run it so if you have any problem please let me know and uh, uh, how to run the implementation has two ways one is using a docker which is easy and uh, it's use a QMU so you don't have to have any special uh, hardware other than your laptop or uh, PC. And another one is uh, using a real hardware development board for the Intel, um, ARM, and RISC-V. And, and also it has a wiki page explaining some of the pages which I'm going to talk today. And uh, is my mic okay? Um, yeah, I think I hope hold it like this. Um, wiki page, so if you, uh, other than, um, there's more uh, documentation on the wiki page, so if you would like to see the link in a later time or something, please go to the wiki page. So now this is the introduction of the TIP protocol uh, at the IETF activity. This is the overall uh, diagram, and which is, um, something I need going to explain today. And what is IETF is, uh, it's e engineering organization for um, making us doing engineering activity and making a standard of for the internet protocols. For for example, historically TCP, UDP, whatever it's using on the current web browser, it's uh, it was related to IETF or W3C, our organization. And recent uh, famous uh, pro protocol, it's uh, was was the HTTP3 at IETF, which used to be called QUIC. Initially started as a called QUIC. And today, I to talk about IETF, the problem is TIP consists with other working group activities. So I have to talk about SUIT and RATS. So TIP uh, is an abbreviation of a Trusted Execution Environment Provisioning and suit is called software update for internet of things and and rats is a remote attestation procedure and who is the audience of these working group activity is it's not only this but the, the one it's easy to explain for me is the vendor who developed the product with a cpu or soc uh, which requires software update or customization which is a typical embedded company or um, there's a use case for the data center for, for the cloud computing, but um, that's going to be covered somewhere here. And and how it's d different, or how, what it's doing uh, at IETF is going to be explained in later uh, slides, but um, basically um, there's a server maintaining the software and data in the device, target device, and how it provides it is by before sending any of the binary from the server to the embedded device or IOT device or uh, or whatever you call it is uh, checks the uh, whether the device is compromised or not and if it's okay with, uh, then it will uh, install the binary to the uh, target and uh, confidential computing I'm not going to talk about this much but it's also uh, it's recently going to be important for the data center, who is the company or, or user who is, wants to have your uh, virtual machine hosted to the uh, data center, but you do not want the data center host machine to be able to read inside the guest machine. 
And okay, so uh, what's the difference between deep suit rats? Um, this is yeah. I'm going to explain this in later here. So and and the why how it's related to uh, with the software supply chain itself is um, software supply chain many have different kind of the um, Many people have their own definition. So when I started engineering, um, like 2002 or 2001, software supply chain is uh, typically it's a package man maintained like DEB or IPM, and you have a version number. And if the one of the package have a bug, you need to replace with a new uh, Debian package or Red Hat or RPM, and uh, and it's you could do this with the tip, but um, it's it's more uh, the tip is as a how to uh, send the binary between the server and the devices with the secure with the um, secure manner, with the people who is uh, at IET who is talented with the internet um, protocol with the um, um, crypt cryptography and the security uh, su subject. So in the skip, there's a, another working group called Skit, and it's a use the rats and Kose working group activity and um, defining format for the um, Skit working group. And 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 it's difficult to sometimes it's how what's the uh, use cases without just reading IETF's draft. So I just listed some of the some some of the list I came up. So the, uh, the trusted application is typically kind of payment application, like a credit card application um, used on the tablet or app iPhone, or automotive or on the um, dashboard, or DRM, like Netflix. And some of the Intel SGX implementation was a BD player on the Intel machine. And, the f f and also it's do conducting former update and personalization data is just basically both as just a binary um, and the tech for the engineering point of view but it's a uh, yes like a device authentication or unlock unlocking the hardware feature which is already installed with the and the hardware but you just need to unlock the feature then you need the, some serial code coming from the server to the um, the device and yes And yeah, too many um, IETF acronyms. So the format of the suit is uh, using uh, called CBOR. Um, and CBOR is concise binary object representation, which is in the, in how, in how to use the, that format for the uh, authentication and um, um, encryption is used with is called COSE, so CBO object signing and encryption. So signing and encryption is using with the CBO. And what's the difference in the uh, path is in um, in the in internet pr pr protocol. There's two two pr type of the packet. It's whether it's text based or binary based. Text based is like uh, similar to HTTP or JSON. The famous one is JSON, and there's a binary one. Is uh, typically it was like uh, zero to thirteen bit uh, re register representation with the binary is one of the way of the uh, used in the uh, internet. But another one is uh, ASN.1, the, the format. Anybody re you remember ASN.1? It's still used widely used for the certificate and this ASN that one is tend to uh, the seaboard is tend to be uh, replacing JSON the expression in the binary. So that's the simplest way of the explanation. So it's it's very similar to JSON for the um, uh, programmer, but it's use, it's uh, converted from text based to the, uh, the binary. Okay. And uh, yes. Now, <laughs> and then the, now I'm going to, I need to explain many things, but um, this a verifier is a, a component which handles the remote attestation and the rats working, working group, 
which is going to check whether this device is a, a compromise or not by hacker or intentionally or unintentionally. And TAM is the server who is uh, uh, maintaining the software and data inside the device. And honestly, in this example, it says TEE, and which is called hardware, is uh, uh, expecting to have a TEE hardware, which the famous one is Intel SGX, um, recently is TDX, and another one is ARM Trust Zone, and uh, RISC-V has a uh, um, PMP and also um, um, World Guard. But uh, honestly, it, it, the protocol, what we define in the IETF does not uh, relate it uh, does not regard a hardware implementation. It works on any of the implementations. If you, if it's, if it's similar features, is it able to implement in the hardware or software? It does not matter by reading the draft. And so, so this is something I'm going to come back later. But um, basically, yes, the hardware itself is um, you could run Intel ARM or. Um, um, on, or risk five and make to make the implementation simpler for my project I had I made a, a wrapper uh, implementation called TRF and then implement the TIP protocol on, uh, inside as a TIP device project so, yeah. so now it's how to uh, going to explain the interaction um, is my time okay yeah it's about 10 to 12, 12, 12 minutes after so um, so this is the interaction between the embedded or the target device and then the server and the, and, uh, and the verifier. So um, how it goes, out, goes down a few uh, uh, sequence with the packets. So um, initially, device will send up the HTTP or HTTPS pa packet with no information inside. And the server TAM will uh, server TAM will receive the packet and we will recognize that device is willing to accept the uh, uh, new software or new uh, new data, and the TAM will ask to the device what is your typically what is going to ask is what is the device information? For example, is it a phone or whether it's a BD player or was it a real uh, IoT m machine, or which company, which version, or in which hardware, and also ask what kind of software you already have and what kind of version you already have, so the uh, server could uh, could d distinguish whether you need update or you missing uh, some of the software you going you going you want in the device. And another key, uh, uh, important information going to be sent from the devices. It's called evidence in the RATS working group. It's a um, boot log of the, all the secure boot uh, hash and the single signed uh, history. And that will be sent with the packet with the three. And then that uh, inside the packet three, only the evidence will be passed to the verifier. And verifier is uh, typically owned by the vendor company who de developed the uh, device. Will check the the hash value uh, um, and also the ver uh, all the, and uh, and whether all the binary which was booted on the device was were, were uh, successfully uh, uh, um, verify the signature or not. And if it's everything is looks okay, then they will reply as a, a AR is called attestation re a report or result. And that will be s telling the TAM server whether you could trust this device with it's not ha being hacked or not. If it's okay, then the, the, the server will send the software or data in the binary format and the suit format to the device, and then they're going to conduct the install, install update, and then reply the uh, result. So that's very easy way of explaining uh, the T protocol procedure in like two minutes. But um, honestly, if you try to understand this by reading all the internet drafts, it's going to take like uh, two days or something. So like, just listen to this. It's what two minutes is easy. very good. And uh, I think you know, I already explained this here, but. Um, as if, if, as you know, in this previous uh, slide, 
many of the information or specification is in scattered all over the places, like in TEEP working group, in SUIT working group, in RATS working group, so you have to read a few other drafts to understand this. But um, it's trying to, uh, just trying to make it easy to explain in this um, project um, for the presentation. And this is the, I don't think, I don't, I think I'm going to go deep dive here for the explanation, but this is the how, one of the implementation in the R implementation, how we implement the T protocol on the, this is uh, on the RISC-V CPU, and this is for the ARM CPU, so many people here might understand that ARM trust zone, and it has a, one of the uh, if, um, open source implementation on trust zone is OPTI, from providing by uh, maintain, maintain and developed by Linaro now. It's, uh, it has a Linux running on this side and secure world running on this side. And to make the implementation simpler, I, we implement the TIP protocol as a TIP agent T trusted application here. And, and if you, and if, if the tab server wants to install the application, this, this example is installing a dummy um, trusted application, just print out hello, hello world, hello tip. And another one in, uh, is uh, Intel SGX. This is, uh, yeah, Intel SGX, in, um, it has a, cur a special kernel SGX driver, and it has a SGX runtime. And then we, to make it easier to implement to run the same hello TA, T, TA source code, we made a, a, a wrapper applicate, a wrapper um, layer here. It's talk about almost identical uh, API as the, what Opti provides, which is a subset of the global platform for the R usage. And then it's, it, it's going to execute hello T, TA here. And pretty much the same for the risk five. It's, uh, yeah. And there's two, 13 minutes. And on, um, so another question I frequently being asked is, uh, propriety is almost identical procedure is done even the Windows update and also um, Nintendo Switch or game console or television or like Google uh, TV or something. And why you need to make a standard at IETF or something? And, um, and uh, so, 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 um, yes, at IETF, like for example, yeah, it's, it, it's listing four or five uh, example here, but basically if you uh, listed, um, make a sun standard in one particular organization, which is, is everybody's using on the internet because most of the devices being connected to the internet recently, then um, everybody could imp uh, do the cross prop, uh, vendor uh, s service with the same protocol. And also it, it, it makes it easier to uh, um, not to get into the pitfall for missing some of the implementation and um, missing some of the security hole or something or overall design feature. You just, we uh, listing from all the people's Export and in, into the in the um, in, um, organization with the, their expertise to fix and improve stuff. And yes, I think I'm going to skip here in the details. But basically, um, some of the uh, assumption is uh, we in the on the implementation on in the also on the draft is assuming some of the other stuff is done by. Uh, uh, yourself in the uh, in the device, for example, secure boot, and also has a um, equivalent um, uh, equivalent uh, library for for the signing and the verification, and also uh, encryption for if it's server or PC, you could use Open SSL or Embed TLSL or Wolf. FSSL or equivalent feature in the device. It was okay. And this is another slide with the use cases. Um, this is a, I guess this is automotive one. Um, so um, 
Yeah. Um, what kind of the uh, application and data is done by uh, Teep and Rats and Suit and Skit is a uh, yeah o OTA entirely updating the firmware is one way. If it's uh, if you want to do it that way, or it's possible doing by sending one RPM or one device uh, one De Debian package. But um, for small devices, doing with OTA probably the way what what's typically happening and unlocking hardware feature or remote monitoring or remote telemetry acquisition. And uh, use case for the uh, network equipment, for example, most of the company, what Cisco, Juniper, and those company wake is periodically they need to update the CE certificate. And also you need to update the device uh, firmware. And it's very critical for those devices it's not being compromised with a hacker, so they do uh, have a sec they do care about not the, the device not being compromised. And if it's due, then they need to take some of the action. One of the way is just stop working, which is easy to implement. But most of the time, require a little bit more of the um, um, Im imagination. And uh, this is uh, home security. This is uh, some of the um, home like s easy example is a f home surveillance camera. Um, typically, you, you uh, contracting the security company and as the service ma uh, service man service person come to uh, personnel come to your home and set up the um, camera and stuff and then install the software and then activate the device is you could do that with the um, this uh, uh, t t with the tip and also if it's if the, somebody is compromising the surveillance uh, camera or something, it, it's good to be it's uh, being um, non-functioning anymore. And uh, these uh, s similar way with the power plant, and with the similar way with the drone, and and the confidential computing is uh, yeah, it's uh, if the the VM is if the VM is. Uh, uh, with, with with a hardware feature from the CPU, typically it requires a CPU. If it's the hard virtual machine, guest OS is not able to read from the host machine. Yes, it's possible with the uh, with the TIP protocol. Honestly, this is what only written as a use cases. One of the use cases in the draft, and nobody really have done the implementation yet. So if if anybody wants to help, I we really uh, welcome. And this is the status at ITF. Um, most most of the activity for the engineering on the TIP draft is almost uh, pretty much finished. Um, however, as I explained, this uh, like starting the draft starting from rats and suit, and uh, also it, it depends on the course and, and uh, um, other draft. It's a uh, it's almost there, but it's not completely finished. But um, it's uh, it's expected to be. Reasonably, uh, it's already re reasonably stable situation status of the draft. So if you really, if you're going to read the draft right now and you think it's going to be worth it because it's going to be being updated huge, hugely in the future, no, it's not. Probably it's more pretty much it's stable. So if you read, going to read the uh, draft based on the explanation from this slide, pretty much it's, it, sh it shouldn't um, matter much. And here from really engineering stuff. Um, I hope it's not too, too deep dive, but it's one of the difficulty why I was working on this project was the new text to binary and binary to text conversion format called Seaboard because I knew how to do it with it. JSON. You really do not have any conversion with the text format. And HTTP was easy, like 202 OK or, or 4 or something, 200 OK or 404 um, error or something. And then and now it's Seaboard. It's, and then I started to realize it's a little bit of an old history for me when I was dealing with ASN.1. I did not have a good. Uh, uh, image of the AS.1 as an implementer, implementer's perspective, but it's easy to make a mistake and have a buffer overflow and making a security uh, bug. And how, so I, so I, 
the most of the energy I spent in 2020 and uh, 21 was uh, understanding seaboard because I'm not a when I read the, the draft of the, on the seaboard draft. Yes, I'm not a compiler person. I'm a programmer, so and so this is the, some of the um, knowledge I picked up. So there's a CD deal is the uh, description. It's writ written how to write the uh, um, JSON-like description. And uh, and from the CD deal, if you before you make a, a binary packet, you 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 need to write it down. Um, it's to Seaboard diagnosis notation and then pass it to the Seaboard uh, parser. Then they will become a binary. And how does it go? Is yeah, I took from a little old uh, slide, so it's some of the few little bit of Japanese here, but pretty much. I wrote it down, wrote it in English here. So um, this is the CDDL. It says query request format going to have a type, uh, and the option is the this um, 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 what do you call it method or uh, uh, lines or something. Um, token selected cipher suit selected version and et cetera. And how to write it is the type is written on the right side and. And each of these, whatever token or, uh, is, or is, in this example here, is using 20 as a token, and cipher suit is selecting, uh, putting phi, uh, uh, one in the here, and zero for the selected version and something. Um, and these, co co this side is a diagnos diagnostic notation, um, which is, uh, which is you need, which, you need to find from Seabor uh, draft, but it's I in this when I first write it this draft I was co uh, converting um, by hand, but there is a website it's able to convert it from um, this number in the JSON similar JSON like format to the binary. But um, how to understand is if it's twenty and the hexadecimal representation is going to be. Uh, Oh yeah, token in, in the um, binary size, and this is, I don't know how much was, I think this was 16 bytes or something. With the 20 is the uh, map of the, describing that this is the token. Um, that's how you read it. I, I think I talked too much too quick, but um, um, yeah. If, you, if anybody have a question of a seaboard, please ask me later. And uh, so this is the binary. And binary, you could decode if you would like. So if it if it starts from 82, it's array, and if it's uh, two, means uh, um, probably two is a deep query request. Number two is probably here. Yeah, two type of request. And and the, if it's if it's five, it's a map, and they have the map, contents of the map here listed here. And so if you if if you purely convert this text format to the binary, which with the regular string, it will be similar to 260 bytes. And if you use the, if it's Seaboard, it will be uh, in this example is about 36 byte. Um, good thing is binary is smaller, but the bad thing is if you doing the Debugging the development, typically people use Wireshark or Etherreal or something, and JSON is easier to more debugging because it's just text plain. And this one, yeah, <laughs> there is a plugin for the Wireshark right now, but I think so. But um, I, initially I started with just capturing this and then hand the decoding here and then then read it. But uh, yeah, old school people have a way to do this when they some of the people who experienced the eighty. Uh, binary um, hand assembly. So, um, and these are the examples. So, deep message. So, um, CDD of the expression, um, no, diagnostic notation. It says, like, for example, 120 and 11 or 30 or 3. It, it's a, typically it's a JSON format. It's going to be like this in the Seaboard uh, presentation. And the suit, yes, I didn't explain much about suit. Suit is a T Teep is explaining about how the server and the device or the target 
machine or target PC to interact each other um, and the f internet protocol and how, but T suit is defining the binary format. So the most of the format written on the TEEP is from suit me uh, message format. And this is how, um, like for example, signing um, e the explanation, and this is the, way the, the binary uh, representation. And is that all? Yeah, I think that's all. So I think about 10 minutes for the questions. Anybody? <laughs> Thank you. Anybody question? Yeah. Um, Mike? Um, so, so you mentioned earlier that there are uh, a lot of reasons not to use um, existing like commercial offerings that are mm. closed source. Um, but there are also offerings from this uh, from Linux Foundation projects that are open source community mm. projects, widely used that have stronger mm. security models mm. than a lot of the building blocks you, mm. you use here. Is there a reason why you're using like protocols that have weaker security that are IETF as opposed to using things that are in the Linux Foundation? Um, honestly, IETF and Linux Foundation is not competing each other or anything. So um, if you, if you, if we are, IETF, if, please, if it's, um, you, you see something is, anything is weaker in the security or something, please give us a feedback, then we could improve the draft. And also, um, IETF itself is not, against uh, propriety implementation or try to uh, overrun everything with the um, open standard or anything. Um, because use case, some of the use case, if it's already working, if you really don't need to uh, change it or then it's fine. So if you, some, some companies or some new product, if you want to uh, focus on, um, uh, uh, multi-vendor supporting to the across the inside the uh, uh, boundary of the company or the specification then that's easier to refer the T protocol and suit and rats and even in some of the Jap I don't know in our Western company but when I was working in Japanese company they have many division which do not talk each other so going to the uh, upper external organization and sharing the information was easier to make a product so that was one of the uh, use case So um, if there's not a question, I think I need to talk about a little bit about more about the secure boot hash here here on um, some of the example. So so magically just sending uh, some of the data to the verifier from this example will not e e easy to um, um, check the, whether the device is compromised or not. Um, by hacking by ha intentionally or un unintentionally. So, so what we really need is when the device boots on, typically it boots from the start from embedded device, typically boots from ROM. So ROM um, will verify whatever the binary it's inside, uh, uh, so typically it's, it's SPI nor flash and verify that binary with the, um, s typically it's a symmetric key in the beginning. And then the another, if it's that so the binary is safe, then boot uh, check the binary of the bootloader, and, and that binary is uh, confirmed it's not compromised with the verification. Um, then typically from somewhere from bootloader, you start to use asymmetric uh, um, algorithm, and then loading the, the kernel and doing the same, and then going all the way up. Um, and those chain must be stored. In, as a file, or doesn't it doesn't have to be a file, but as a format, and then and describe in the rats format, and then s send it as a evidence f 
to the verifier. Then the verifier will be understand whether uh, the exact version of the OS or hardware or the application on top of the uh, OS, or if it even the device which does not have an operating system, then still it's going to be able to match whether this needs little uh, missing some of the feature to customize the device or install the new feature, or the version in the device is, uh, need to be updated. And yeah, and also some of the many of the CPU uh, in the currently in the market do not have the TEE capability. So if you it's it's fine using adding the HSM or TTPM chip and doing the similar um, um, information sending all the way to the verifier from the uh, from the TPM chip. Yes. Oh yes. I have uh, one question. Yes, thank you. Uh, what organization or company is involved in this IETF activity? Uh -huh. um, yes, um, Microsoft in initially was Intel and then ARM and um, mostly I was doing from for the risk five part. part. Yes. Okay, thank yes. you. Um, oh, and, si oh, and semantic and protocol. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this might be slightly unrelated, mm -hmm. but which it, are there any like physical Risk Five boards that have Keystone? Mm -hmm. um, we did running Keystone on the I think it was Sci-Fi Unmatched or I don't Unleashed, whichever whichever I don't re really remember, but it's it's in the. It's in the read me. If you have the board, it's uh, it, it should be um, buildable and runnable. But if it doesn't, please let me know. Arigato. Yeah. So I've I've heard it said that um, when you do like attestations mm -hmm. over the code you're running as you go through the process you described of attesting to parts of the firmware and everything else that that only is is useful if um, there are no bugs in any of that software and there's no issues or problems mm -hmm. do you think that there are operating system kernels and other things like this that have no bugs out mm -hmm. there um, and if not then mm -hmm. what's what what guarantees do you really get so um yes very very important so this honestly um, what really talk in the IETF draft is how to interact what kind of information you're going to pass each other in these entities. So it is, it is possible, what, um, like even the oper if you um, already op operating system or whatever it's, is uh, already compromised and then completely writing a fake information above the, um, comp to the fake the ver verifier. So, um, but that's, that's something, this is, it's in the draft, it does not mandate how you implement it. It's uh, the feature. So this, this kind of the example implementation is not, we knew the person who is writing a draft, this is not the only way it's the safe. So you need the, you need the knowledge um, how to make it more secure in this implementation. Especially, I, I wrote, slightly wrote it in the draft, but um, yes. So then you, um, the company who have uh, visiting to ITF and talk to each other, or you have an expert in the cost private company who could uh, provide a better uh, yeah, um, consulting. It's fine, perfectly fine. I think that's it. Thank you very much.